Hey there, Facebook. It is Vanessa here again, your speaker, trainer, and coach from Live, Love, Give. And today I have a message for you, which has come from the back end of a three-day event that I've just been at um, over the weekend. And I had so many different ideas. I'm like, what am I going to talk to you guys about today? I kind of tried to narrow it down, but I'm actually probably going to be talking um, about a couple of different things in particular that I wanted to share with you guys. They're kind of different, but I wanted to start with the message that I've put for today's title, um, which is to not be afraid of going back in time um, because really clearing the past um, gets you, it kind of makes that way for our future. So firstly, I wanted to start with talking about that. Then I'm going to tell you about a bit of a kind of um, sort of like a, maybe like a critique of um, the program that I've been at um, over the weekend. Um, and I want to kind of talk to you guys about that as well. It's sort of talking into a little bit around the differences between psychology and coaching and, um, and how we kind of need a lot of different tools, not just one, which a lot of us can get caught up in. And uh, that's kind of what I want to dive into after this. But firstly, I wanted to talk to you guys about how um, to not be afraid of diving back into your past. And um, myself included, I didn't you really like this. So before I knew anything about self-development, there was a time in my life and uh, it was a time when I simultaneously, um, I lost my um, boyfriend. I left my boyfriend of nearly five years. I, um, I uh, lost my home that I was living in for this, almost the same amount of time. I lost my job, um, uh, you know, a pretty good corporate, comfy, cushy job at the same time. I lost my very best girlfriend and um, I had to move back home and become a full-time uni student again. Okay, so all of this stuff happened to me at once and you guys have been following me for a while. You already have heard this story probably a few times by now, um, but if you haven't, it might be your first time and it's a really important thing that I talk about situational depression. Um, if things happen in your life that make such radical shifts in your identity, you know, losing your partner, losing your job, losing your best friend, uh, you know, completely revolutionizing your lifestyle, you know, um, all of that stuff shakes us up, takes us out of our identity. We have an identity crisis. It is like a death. It is like you have to go through a complete grieving process, not only for the people and situations that you've lost in your life, but also for the person that you have died to and who you're becoming. And the reason why I bring this up is because in that point in my life, I felt like I had nowhere to turn. I um, didn't want to burden the people closest to me with my own uh, struggles and challenges. I was surrounded by um, people who worry a lot. And so um, I felt I was very much on my own. And um, I remember, you know, um, going to the doctor and just feeling really sad and really depressed. And he actually referred me to a psychologist at the time. And I was like, well, okay, I've got problems. I don't know. And, um, and I went to a psychologist and gosh, she was the most beautiful human being. Um, uh, just helped me so much. And, uh, but one of the things um, with psychology was that, and what I learned, and now being a coach myself and being able to reflect back and see the differences as well, um, at that time, the one thing, one thing major that I needed was some outlet, somebody that I could fully express my entire emotional experience to without fear of them taking it on personally and then me having to worry about them and feeling like I'm burdening them or whatever. Um, so that part of um, the psychology was absolutely brilliant. Um, and But one of the things was that we tended to, at times, go back into the past, like go back into this past situation, past relationship. And whenever we did do that, I found myself after those sessions feeling like um, kind of low energy, feeling it like it kind of triggered a bit of depression, not feeling really great. And I was kind of had people in my life at the time who had had the experience with psychologists. And that was the one thing that I kind of was drumming around in my head, them telling me, oh, psychologists make you just go through the past and it's like, it brings up all this, stirs up all this stuff that you don't need to go there, right? So I did have that kind of frame of mind as well at the time. Um, but 
you know, going through those processes and all I really wanted was I really wanted her guidance. And I remember throughout our sessions, I was like, oh, maybe she's going to give me that direction, that clarity today. Maybe she's going to give me some action steps. And she never did. It was kind of like, yes, I got the benefit of being able to talk it all out and feel like somebody held that space for me. But I never, there was always something missing. Like there was always that bit like, well, what's your, what's your guidance here? Like what based on your experience, what based on your expertise, could you kind of, you know, give me some options here, give me some ideas here. And it never really went there. And I even remember kind of asking her a couple of times, like, well, what do you think I should do? Like, what's your guidance here? And she kind of always kind of deflected it. And I was always like, oh my God. So anyway, um, the part of what I wanted to talk to you about was twofold. The difference between psychology and coaching and also why it is actually good to go back in your past and clear that stuff out to make room for your future and not stay stuck in the mentality that I had at the time with just a process of um, psychology with one woman, you know, that I felt like those I had a kind of a not so great kind of negative kind of disempowering, um, you know, experience of going back in the past. And it kind of cut got me kind of stuck for a little while. Um, but, um, you know, what the difference is between psychology and coaching is that psychology is very much focused on diagnosing the problem. Okay, so you and that we, we do need self-awareness. Absolutely. So I'm not saying in this video that psychology or coaching is better than the other. I think we need both. I think in any area of our lives when we need to grow and expand, we need to go to war with it. We need to hit it at all different angles. And um, but psychology is very much like I said, going back and diagnosing the problem. And um, that can be helpful for some people and, and a lot of people, but um, it, it can also keep you stuck and put you in a box and kind of limited. And um, it doesn't really give you a pathway forward that you know propels you towards your limitless potential. It's kind of like, oh, that's my problem. Okay now what sort of thing, you know? And whereas coaching is predominantly more so for yeah, we've got to address the issues, but what we're really doing is creating a compelling future for yourself so that you can have clarity, direction, meaning, purpose, inspiration, all of that great stuff that can bring you out of any darkness. Okay, so with that being said, at the time I didn't know coaching even existed, didn't know anything about self-development. I only had this interaction with um, my psychologist um, at that time. So, um, you know, uh, what I wanted, how I wanted to kind of also bring that into my experience over this weekend um, has been that over this weekend, we've been utilizing these specific tools. We've been training with these tools. We've had these tools used on us. We've been going seriously deep. And using these tools um, that we learned this over the weekend were really about helping ourselves and other people to clear the emotional baggage of the past. In particular, we focused on masculine and feminine energies, um, influences from our past, predominantly starting with our mothers and our fathers, and then working, working our way through um, family, different influences um, that we need to clear that are limiting us and holding us back. And uh, anyway, it was phenomenal. It was a really great um, experience and process. And, um, you know, with the work that I've done on myself up until this point um, and hearing the other stories from a lot of the other women in the room, I thought, wow, like, I hope I've got something to clear here, right? Because there were some traumatic experiences going on in that room. And, and most people, this is the first time them dealing with any of these sort of issues and challenges. For me, I've been doing it for a long time now, um, but I know there's always another layer, but my expectations were kind of kind of low. It was more so me learning extra tools to be able to help others with. But my mind was absolutely blown. And um, like going through these processes, I was able to bring up this stuff that I didn't even know was there and clear it so that it's no longer holding me back in my subconscious. And a funny thing happened just as a kind of side note that yesterday we cleared our fathers and, um, and you know, got back from the event last night. We had a bit of a big family dinner going on at home that I arrived back to. And uh, I don't know, it was so incredible. Like my, 
my dad and I, we, we have a pretty good relationship, but we, just like he was, his energy toward me, I don't know, you know, clearing the, that sort of emotional baggage out, his energy toward me was like amazing. Like it's always kind of good, but there's always, you know, like I know him, he knows me. It's kind of like, yeah, you know, we get along really well, but this just t kind of took it to this whole new level. And um, I don't even know how to kind of explain it, but it was just so impactful to be able to have the kind of depth of conversation, talk about the things that were really interesting to me that I've been learning, that I've been discovering, all this sort of stuff, and had this phenomenal conversation um, that I haven't ever had with my dad before. So I know this stuff works, right? I'm not, I absolutely think it's brilliant. But one of the conversations that I had with the, um, with the trainer of, um, of, this, uh, of, the, of the event over the weekend um, was it kind of felt like they were just teaching us these tools and this was it. You know, this was the be all, end all, this is it. All you gotta do is you gotta go through these kind of techniques, you gotta go through these processes and you get the client to clear out all that negativity and then and then you go to the next person, you clear it and clear it and clear it and then that's it. And I, I you know, I've got a lot of tools in my tool belt up until this point and I, I you know, I'm a human guinea pig, so I'm gonna to continue to gather a whole bunch more. But I've learned from some, from some incredible people, you know, across the globe, from, you know, Tony Robbins to Dr. John D. Martini, Byron Katie, um, you name them, I've probably read their books, I've probably gone to their course or event, or I'm planning to. And, um, and anyway, so I, I could see how this process and these, act, these steps could so be useful to me helping the people that I work with. Um, but definitely not just leaving them with that. And to me, it felt a bit like my experience with, with that psychologist. It was like, no, this is not, this does help. There are elements of this that absolutely help. But what about other tools? What about other ways of thinking? What about other strategies here? that are covering the different bases. And I kind of, you know, curiously and um, kindly sort of gave some questions to the instructor about this and brought in like, what about these methods? What about this method? What about that method? And um, uh, I don't know, I didn't really uh, gravitate to the answers that were given to me totally. It felt like um, kind of a bit wishy-washy and kind of a bit one-sided. And this is that problem that we can all get into when we get to think that this is the be-all, end-all. You know, oh, psychology is the only way, coaching is the only way, this style of coaching is the only way. And we miss the boat on not only our own growth, but how we can actually be of service, of, service to others. And that kind of scares me um, when we can get into these mindsets and mentalities and you know, um, think that, oh, this is the only way. So my side note on today's uh, message, and I realize I've gone down all these different paths today because I couldn't, I couldn't keep it to one thing. Um, but I, my side note on this is that I hope that my message for you today um, gives you empowerment in terms of the value of actually going back into your past and not being scared or afraid of that because it is absolutely going to clear the pathway forward for your future. And secondly, to not think that there is only ever one way. And in actual fact, if you really want to be the best you can be at whatever it is that most inspires you, Go to town, go to war with it. Be a constant learner and not just a learner, a guinea pig. You have to put yourself first and foremost into these experiences. Go for it, whatever it is, test it out. Don't You can't have an opinion on something unless you've actually experienced it. So stay open-minded and don't get stuck in thinking there's only one way and this is the best and only way because it will absolutely limit not only your growth but your ability to serve and actually be of a, make a meaningful difference in the lives of others. No matter what industry um, you're in, you have to be consistently and constantly using yourself as the guinea pig and upskilling and up leveling and don't have an opinion on something that you ain't had a go at and um, and definitely be willing and curious to try all sorts of things that you might at first question 
you know, there was different sorts of things that I was like, uh, you know, okay, I get some of this stuff and I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to absolutely give it a go. But I also want to be the kind of person who, if I'm questioned about what are the tools that I use, I want to be able to talk to all different types of people. You know, some people are very analytical and they, they aren't going to, they're not going to trust um, the tools that you want to use with them unless you can tell them why. Why is this useful? Why is this powerful? What can I expect? So you've got to be open to um, be able to know and know in depth the kind of skill set and the kind of tools that you want to be using with other people because if they don't trust it, you're not going to be able to serve them. Even if it is a great strategy and a tool, you know, I really do believe that to the degree that you trust the process is the, to the degree that you're actually going to be successful with it. Okay, so you've got to cover all bases too. I know I'm probably talking to the coaches out there and anybody out there who really wants to serve others with your unique gifts and what inspires you at your highest level. So I'm going all sorts of, oh my God, I hope I haven't like con totally confused everybody out there with my message that is down a million rabbit holes. Um, but I hope that it has absolutely empowered you and been of value to you. And definitely, I want to hear some questions from you guys or just say hi. And before I do that, have you joined the Limitless Potential Academy monthly masterclasses yet? Because I am so pumped, so excited to help you to not only just learn this stuff, not only to just learn great tools and strategies and ways of growing ourselves, but actually implement it into your life, giving you the strategies and the actionable tools to really get the value out of all that you learn and do. So if if that is of interest to you, definitely make sure that you enroll. The link is up above. Can't wait for those uh, classes to kick off on June 13th. Um, super excited about that. And let me jump, uh, jump into the um, room with you guys and check in. So any questions or say hi, I'd love to connect with you guys now. Um, I've got Julian and Sarah and Stan and Kadar and Sam's here. Hello, my friend. And Judy and Roxana, yay. And Melissa and Rose, ah, love it. All you guys are in the house. And Brian, great to see you as always. And uh, Ty's here and Sam, wow, so sparkly and beautiful. Thank you, Sam. And uh, Alexandria is here, yay. And Vanessa, ah, love having all of you guys here. And Mix here and Elf and Edgar, sending love from Chihuahua, I love it. Um, you're so right, we need to let go of the past in order to receive new things from the future. Learn from our lesson in order Order to increase our wisdom absolutely whenever we can you know clear what's going on in the past because all of that is in your subconscious all right whenever we can clear that we can absolutely open our pathway forward way open and get rid of self-sabotaging behaviors that get in the way of any success you know it's all going on in that subconscious that 96 percent of your mind's capacity you know that's all the memories that's all the stuff that you've completely forgotten about and you don't realize what's driving you you know and if we can clear that all out you know it, we don't have to stay there we can move beyond it and we can let go of the past and you know only reflect back there for the lessons and the gratitude you know and then continue to create a compelling future forward where nothing is going to get in the way um, and trip us up along that journey so absolutely Edgar thanks for sharing and Glenn's here and hey Roxana I always love seeing you and Paulie and Stephen and Sam yes um, that was a lot for you happening at the same time yeah yeah, and you know, we all have our own moments in time when we experience situational depression, you know, when we have a complete radicalization of our identity, you know, and all these things happen in our environment. But, you know, I like to say that everything happens for a reason and a purpose that serves you. You've got to find those lessons. Um, and when you can find those lessons and you can actually grow from them, they won't repeat themselves in your future. So absolutely. Thanks, Sam and Alexandria. Thank you so much. It's my spirit sister, um, so much love for you. And Lisa's here, and Branton, and August for Tony. I hope I got your name right. And uh, Andrew, and Lisa, and Mark, and Sanford. Sanford, hello to you. And Tanya, and uh, Tammy, um, hello, totally get this. Loving that this is resonating with you, Tammy. And Nikki, and Ruini, and Sam, um, can I co? Can a coach have psychology approach supporting client? Absolutely. You know, if um, I believe in 
having all bases covered. I think that, you know, even it's the same rules apply in terms of whether you're a coach or you're a psychologist. One is not better than the other. One is not the be all end all. You should educate yourself on both. You know, and be able to know what your client needs. Whoever you're trying to serve and support, you've got to have the tools in your tool belt to be able to draw upon so that you can actually be of service. And if you don't have the tools just yet, if you haven't generated that experience, then you've got to be willing to refer people on to the people who can help them in that area. And if you don't have all those skills, you know, make sure that you educate the people that you want to serve to also be going to war with their personal development. You know, have you in their corner if you're the coach but also if you don't have the skill set of the psychologist you know maybe if that's what they you can see that they would need that support of as well then encourage them to have you both on their team you know and absolutely the whole purpose is not for you to be the most significant person who's got all everything you know but actually to be focused on the client success you know and so you want to encourage all that is going to be good for them even if it means it all doesn't come from you Absolutely love your question, Sam. And uh, Edgar, I love it when you said about guidance. It's the reason why we are like an anchor or a lighthouse. We guide others with our inner light. That's why we need to learn to burst our flame into a big fire to guide others from darkness. That is so beautifully put, Edgar. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And uh, love how you articulated that. And uh, Elf, resonating with you, dear soul. So good to see you, Elf. Um, when I'm in... In our darkest times, when in our darkest times, we uh, times we seek past experiences and traumas that only add to the drama. Yet it is the only way to feel emotions of hurt. Except then, let go of the past. Looking within, uh, we have all the answers uh, needed to find our authenticity and allow us to heal and grow. When, our, when one recognizes and becomes aware, one can evolve to a higher state of being. Infinite respect and love, beautiful soul. And much infinite respect and love to you as well, El. Thank you so much for always sharing your words of wisdom. It's so beautiful to have you back live and, um, and definitely... You know, we can, if we don't clear the emotions of the past, absolutely, we, we can use the emotions from the past just to get back into drama. You know, um, when we don't clear it and we don't get intentional and we don't have the courage to go back there and move beyond it, find the lessons, then yeah, absolutely. It's just going to continue to create drama in our lives. And so many beautiful human beings at the event just over the weekend having some really amazing breakthroughs and addressing stuff that they either hadn't ever before or they hadn't done for a long time and was definitely holding them back in their lives. So really grateful to have been a part of that process and uh, love your words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Elf and Vanessa. I heard a saying once, don't look back because you're not heading that way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, but we need to realize that life is not one or the other. It's not just all or nothing, you know, and there are times when going back into your past are incredibly valuable. If it disempowers you, got to do something about it. But if you have a process of being able to clear the past so that the only time you go back to the past is to, you know, relive beautiful, amazing uh, uh, memories that you're grateful for and also take the lessons, remember the lessons and reflect back on your successes and celebrate, you know, if you can use, utilize the past for that, then it's going to help you in your future, you know, so absolutely. And I love that. I've heard that one too, um, Vanessa. Thanks so much for sharing. And uh, Byron's here. And Sam, that's, a, that's, a, that's really a deep training you're going through, amazing tools and processes. Absolutely, Sam. And I can't wait to share them with you, my friend. And uh, Abdul and David and Rayed and uh, Jumantis. I'm loving that you're finding some truth here. And Noma and Sam, it feels like digging the wound and leaving it uncovered. Yeah, like when you go into that, you know, my experience when I had that beautiful woman who was a psychologist and she helped me immensely. But that one part about going into the past and, you know, not having the pathway forward, it was kind of like digging up, like you're saying, digging the wound and leaving it uncovered, you know, rather than clearing it up, you know, and uh, giving it what it needs to for its, you know, for its... um for it's uh, to get better. Oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, to heal, you know, to heal, you know, that process of healing, you know, that, that compelling future forward. So absolutely. 
And uh, no, Ma, loving that this is a great message for you. And uh, thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that this has been helpful for you. And you're so welcome, as always. And uh, Cody's here. And Edgar, beautiful message, Vanessa. It's your life experience, your growth, your path. Don't be afraid of being you and living your life. Absolutely. Beautiful words of wisdom. Absolutely there, Edgar. And uh, Gabrielle's here. Hello to you. And Huss is here. Hey. And uh, Sam, your guinea pig approach is inspiring. I can see how it's accelerating your growth and empowerment. Thank you so much, Sam. And I just feel immensely grateful that I get to be the guinea pig, you know, because I pretty much I built a business out of me growing myself, you know, going to all these personal development events and using myself as the guinea pig and then being able to, you know, not only grow myself, but actually simplify and systemize the, the best, the most valuable tools and strategies and help you guys fast track your success with it. And I'm just grateful that you guys are here and give me a platform to do exactly what I love doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want more of my guinea pig action, then you've got to join the monthly masterclasses because that's where I give it all away. You know, my Facebook lives. I'm having a chat with you. I hope that everything that I communicate with you guys is empowering. Um, but I want to make this really actionable for you guys. So that's what the monthly masterclasses are. They're more of a training. I'm going to give you the tools. I'm going to give you the systems. I'm going to give you the processes of actually getting the most value out of the best tools available. So if that is of interest to you, definitely come and join us in the monthly masterclasses. And I know you're, um, you're coming along for that journey, Sam. So awesome. And uh, Safon and Melissa, hello to you. And uh, Huss, hey V, missed this, but I'll catch the recording looking quite magical. Oh, thank you, Huss. And, um, and absolutely, um, let me know if you have any questions when you catch the recording. And uh, Vanessa, would love to hear your thoughts on feminine and masculine energy and how if we are out of balance, it can really affect relationships. Oh my God, absolutely, Vanessa. You have just tapped onto my very favorite topic. And um, actually... Um, I, with my eight week empowerment group that, um, just graduated, uh, two weeks ago now, I think coming up to two weeks ago, um, we actually, that, that's one of the main topics that they were kind of telling me, Hey, can you talk more about this? Can you do more about this? And what I'm kind of planning is that the very first, um, training that I launch for you guys in the monthly masterclasses is going to be on exactly this. So if that would be totally of interest to you, please let me know. I rely on you guys to let me know exactly what would absolutely juice you and um, masculine feminine energies and how that affects our relationships and our authenticity. Oh my God. If you guys want me to do that as the first training, I will absolutely do it. I know I've heard from so many of you guys that that's what you want. Um, and it's like I said, it's my favorite topic. So Love hearing that, Vanessa. And um, I've done a couple of Facebook Lives that I will link up to this video as well afterwards um, that I hope you'll find really valuable and definitely join the monthly masterclass. So you get to um, get onto that um, June 13th. And uh, Victoria's here and Hilton and Craig. And uh, Victoria, I'm loving that you're getting some yes, yes, yes action in here. And Nicholas is here. And hello, Ram. Great to see you back. And Juan, um, what steps would I take to get my partner from living in the past? Not sure how to move forward when he stays in the past. Absolutely, Dwan. So what I would say is I would really encourage, um, see, the problem is when we're in relationship with somebody, sometimes we're just not the right messenger for them. So although you might be really well intentioned, you telling your partner what they should do or shouldn't do, doesn't always go down that well. And I think we've all had that experience. Um, so what I would say, um, if it is your partner, I would really encourage you to be a leader. You to be the leader in terms of what you feel will serve them. What is it that um, you want from them? You want them to let go of the past, move beyond the past. How are you going with that? Is there stuff that you might need clearing in your past? Be the leader, seek the tools, the guidance. I help people do that all of the time. I've just up leveled my skill set on this over the weekend as well. Um, so if that is of interest to you, Duan, definitely reach out to me, let me know. Um, but also, you know, depending on your relationship, you know, he might not be threatened by you kind of guiding him. So if he's not, then I would definitely encourage him to um, seek out some guidance in terms of clearing the past emotions. 
like I said, if you would like me to help you with that, because I've just up leveled myself in this area, then definitely reach out to me. I'd be happy to help and support you in any way possible. Um, and um, and also, there's so many different angles. So I'd want to talk to you personally about that. So thank you for the question, Duan. I hope that's helpful. And uh, and uh, Hella is here. And Ram, clearing the past clears the path to welcome the new. Boom. I love how you put that, Ram. Absolutely. And uh, Zook, I'm interesting in watching your video. Tell me the schedule that you will take video online. I ask you one question. Did you have a sad memory affecting you on you now? Okay, so Zook, uh, I love that you're loving watching these videos. I do them every single damn day. And I've done that for over um, a year now. So I ain't stopping anytime soon. Um, in terms of actually the masterclasses though, where I give you the actual tools, give you the systems, make it actionable in your life, um, they are going to be once a month commencing from June 13th every single month. I can't wait to deliver that to you guys. Um, and um, I have to ask you one question. Did you have a sad memory affecting you um, now? Um, I cleared a bunch of stuff over this weekend that I actually didn't really know was there. Um, and they were kind of memories from all sort of pivotal moments throughout my childhood and my adolescence and even into my adulthood. Um, so far I had cleared my mother and my father and just cleared some different things there. Um, I know I've got much more to clear, um, you know, but we've got to have a process to bring all this stuff out so that we can move beyond it. Um, so definitely, I would say the short answer is yes, I have had um, sad memories um, that I was kind of unconscious to, that I brought up and cleared, um, and they, they were probably very much so affecting me in my present. Um, I could go on a deep dive. If you guys are interested in me um, sharing more about my personal experience with those things um, and those patterns, then you can let me know and I'll do a Facebook Live for you guys. Um, so thanks for the question, Zook. And uh, Aditya, um, in Hindu religion, uh, most of us have been taught to see experience and follow parents as our living gods. Um, I 100% agree with it. It has been psychologically implemented in our brain to see it in this way. How can I clear if my father has limited, fixed, insecure mindset and when he is not understanding my need to lead my ambition freely with his initial financial and moral support, how can I gain it? Aditya, you're kind of speaking a little bit of my language and um, you know, part of my journey when I decided to quit law. Um, you know, I had finished a business degree. I started law. I had a year and a half um, left on my law degree before um, I actually got introduced to personal development. And that's where my life took off because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was living to the expectations of um, my family and uh, getting pretty good financial support to do that. Um, when I made that decision to quit law and go and actually discover what it was that I wanted to do. And here I am today. Um, you know, I lost all of that. I lost all the... Um, financial support, the emotional support, the everything, they cut me off, my family cut me off, deleted me from Facebook, deleted me out of their phone, all sorts of things happened. Um, but you know, uh, over the journey, you have to focus on clearing this stuff for you. Because when you clear it for you, you simultaneously, um, it, it goes out, it has a ripple effect on all other relationships. Now, my experience, and I'd need to learn more about you and your your um, experience of your family and so forth, but as a general rule, your family just wants the best for you based on their model of the world. See, my family, my family just wanted me to be happy, but it was just that their version of happiness meant that I had to be a successful doctor, lawyer, engineer like them, like all my brothers and my dad and everything. And, um, and I had to paint a new pathway forward to show them, you know, what that I could, I was my happiest when I was figuring this out and doing what I love to do, even though they had no idea what the hell I was doing. And I've had to go on that journey of reassuring them and showing them what I do. And I'm so grateful to say right now that, um, you know, they're my absolute number one raving fans, you know? So you have to bring the certainty in all that you do. And I love what Dr. John D. Martini says about this. He says, that we were born into the family that we have in order to teach our families how to love unconditionally. 
that's going to take some challenge. You have to be, you know, you have to get and grow beyond the child and the adolescence into the mature adult. You know, you have to take that hero's journey. And until you can do that, you know, you if you try and play it safe, you try and stay comfortable, you try and just bend to the rules of those gods, you know, um, you're, you're never going to be fulfilled. And, you know, a family that loves you wants you to be happy. You may just have to be painting a new picture for them and come with certainty and don't filter, be authentic and be consistent. And in time, it's been my experience and the experience of uh, many people that I've worked with that your family, those loved ones um, do actually come on that journey with you. Not always, but at least if they don't, you've built yourself up to a mature adult who doesn't require that. You know, you don't require them to have to come on that journey, but you know that you've done all that you can to live authentically and congruently. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect you on the same level. I really hope that that was a value to you, Aditya. And uh, Mark's here and Tayeb and Vanessa, you're so welcome. And uh, Chris, uh, love to you, my friend. And are you still having the power sessions of 15 minutes? I actually um, ran out of bookings in my calendar um, and I've kind of taken them off for a while because I have been super busy in all that I've got coming up for you with the masterclasses um, and with my coaching clients. And I'm launching a new round of the eight week and all sorts of stuff is going on. But Chris, where have you been? Like I've wanted to get on this 15 minute power session with you for so long. So shoot me a message and we'll arrange a time. Um, and that goes for any of you guys. If you really want to get on one of these 15 minutes, I will, I'll have to manually do it at this stage right now because I'm so busy. You should see my calendar. But I would love to connect with you, Chris. So definitely reach out. And uh, Sam, yes, masculine and feminine energy. Um, make it the first topic. Woohoo. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Keep letting me know, please, guys. I know you guys who are in the monthly masterclasses, Keep letting me through, um, letting me know because I want to absolutely blow your mind with these masterclasses. And what will help me to blow your mind is to know exactly what you're really focused on, what you really want the most from. So at this stage, I've heard from so many of you that you want to focus on the relationship aspect and masculine and feminine. And I don't use masculine and feminine just purely for relationship. It's also one of the greatest links into you being your most authentic and whole self. So thanks for letting me know, Sam. And keep guys, please let me know the topics that you were really, really, really juiced by. And uh, Jody's here and uh, Dwan will be reaching out to you. Thank you. Awesome, Dwan. Can't wait to hear from you. And Emmanuel, I know you're, you're part of the uh, monthly masterclasses. So excited to have you. And uh, Zook, um, oops, oops, oops. Uh, what will I get um, in the master course? Can you tell me about it? Absolutely. Thanks for the question. So the monthly masterclasses with the Limitless Potential Academy, Every single month, I'm going to be doing a live training with you guys. You're going to get the actionable steps in all areas of life. So that's what I do. So I focus on four, the four different areas of intelligence. So we will be building and expanding our intellectual intelligence, our body intelligence, our emotional intelligence, and our spiritual intelligence. I am going to help you to round out your unique genius in these masterclasses because I I'm so sick of all of us being addicted to learning and growing, but we learn this stuff and then we don't fully know how to implement it and take action on it and therefore get real value from it. So we kind of keep running this kind of up and down cycle like, I think that was good. I think I learned that thing or I've read that book and I've read a million books. I've got a library here. I've gone these courses, but what about the action? And, um, and that's what these monthly masterclasses are all about to round you out as the brilliant individual that you can be and limitless potential accessing it, um, on your unique pathway. So that's what it's all about. And I cannot wait to have you guys there. And also you're going to get access to me, um, for Q and a making sure that everything is sinking in and you are on fire for the next month until we meet again for our next must monthly masterclass. So definitely click on the link above and join me um, and the rest of our team. Um, such a beautiful community that I can't wait for you guys to be a part of. 
All right, and uh, Sanford, um, uh, I hope that that answered your question as well in terms of what are your classes and what and or when are they. So um, I hope I just answered that all for you. And the commencement date is on June thirteenth, Aussie time. Um, it'll if you're in the states or in most other places in the world, it'll it'll be the twelfth of June for you guys. Um, but I am so pumped. And um, as a side note, if you can't make it live, you've got access to your own membership site where every single month all of the trainings are going to be added to which you have the you can reflect back on them you can come back to them it's going to have lots of um, actionable kind of worksheets and things that you're going to be able to take things really deep with um, so I'm going to cover all bases and on top of that you're going to get extra special secret stuff from me um, that you'll only get if you're in those classes um, throughout the month you're going to get some videos and different trainings and all sorts of stuff as well to go on with the month. So hope that's um, answered your question, Sanford and uh, Luke's here and Katie and Jonathan and uh, Zook. I'm in Vietnam quite far from your country. How can I get involved in the class or have to go there? No, Zook, um, my classes, the monthly masterclasses are all online. So you can be anywhere in the world and uh, be tuning into the masterclasses and getting all of the value from them. Absolutely. So thanks so much for the question and Danielle and uh, Sanford. Awesome. Grateful um, that that answered your question and you're so welcome. So guys, I really hope that my message for you all has served you, supported you, empowered you, and I hope you're going to come on the journey with the monthly masterclasses. Oh my God, I'm super excited. The countdown is on, less than two weeks, really, really pumped and excited to share everything that I have in store for you guys. And, um, and definitely, as always, I'm sending you all of my love, light, blessings, gratitude, energy, enthusiasm, everything extraordinary coming to you, to wherever you are in the world today. I hope it's beautiful, amazing, and extraordinary. And thank you so, so much, guys, for joining me and asking your questions and engaging. You give me so much energy, and I'm super grateful for each and every one of you guys. Sending you all of my love, and I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.